Welcome everyone to our virtual class. I'm hoping everyone's doing well today. Um, we're going to continue making some cards from the Hunky Dory Birdsong Kit. We've got an easel card for you, another card, uh, and two other cards. And then if we have some time, then I'll show you what we're hoping to do at our next class. So I'm just going to switch my camera so I can just kind of go through what comes in the Hunky Dory package, and then uh, we'll get started. Uh, all right. Oh, actually, this is a, a bonus card. Um, I can go through how I made it at the end of the class, um, but the instructions for this card are on our blog. So this is a bonus card, but again, I'll review it um, at the end of the class or when we're finished making our cards. Um, so you, you understand how I did that one. It's pretty simple, but uh, we'll go through it. Okay. So in our last class, um, hopefully people all had a chance to finish or uh, make the uh, interlocking gatefold card. So again, all of the instructions for this class happen to be on um, the Ecstasy Crafts website, and you should have received them if you um, purchased the package. We, so we also... I'm trying new cameras, but uh, it doesn't give me that much space here. Um, and then in the package, you also um, have the opportunity to, to make eight different birdhouses. So this was the one that I happened to make at our uh, last class. So they're very cute and they open up and um, this little flap also opens up so you can see what's on the inside. So that's just a review for those who may have not uh, joined us for, your, for the last class. Um, you can go back and make those and the video should be on the website. So today's class, we're gonna make uh, this card. We're gonna make an easel card. And you can see that's sort of the easel there. And then, oh, I have to find my other card. It'll come, it's in this pile, I'm sure. Oh. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. I uh, swapped out my cameras, and um, so hopefully you can see things a little bit better. Now, this is blurry on my end, but I guess uh, if it's better for you, that's the main thing. So this is the third card um, we're going to make. We're going to make this easel card. If it was so blurry, you couldn't really see it, so you can see it's an easel. And then we're going to make this card uh, in the class today. If we have a chance, I will go through the bonus card, but these instructions are on the blog uh, for everyone to see, and you can make this as well. Okay, so what I want to do is just for those of you who weren't able to participate in our last class, I'm just going to go through what you get in the Hunky Dory bundle that we're using to make this card uh, today. You get a paper pad. It's an eight by eight paper pad with uh, 48 double sided pages. So the pages you can see have um, images here. I've got all my extras images. And then they have their back is they've got different colors on the back of uh, the image pages. So you can see lots of so these are all the same. But They've got lots of different patterns for you to make lots more cards. So um, because we, we I've just used this uh, paper pad mainly for um, backgrounds in our cards today, but you can see there's lots of images. And then the other thing I wanted to point out was that you also get uh, sentiments. So we're going to use a few of these uh, uh, today, but you can see it's for every day. So you've got birthday thinking of you. You are a very special man. There's happy Easter, a home, home tweet home. So all occasions and you get, um, I think four of these as well. So you've got lots of opportunity uh, with this package to make cards for all occasions. So that's a paper pad. So in addition to the paper pad, you get, um, this is called the bird song package and it's really toppers. And this is um, what the front looks like. And you can see you get different examples that you can use. This was the interlocking gatefold. And this is like the card we made um, 
in the last class. And then on the back, you get a few more examples uh, that will help you uh, continue making more cards from this package. Um, this comes with the toppers, which are these, you, well, you get the um, background cardstock or this matastic cardstock, which has lots, it's nice and thick. It, it scores beautifully and you've got lots of different designs. And we're gonna use that today. And then you get the toppers that go along with it. And you can see I've, I've taken some of these out, but you get uh, several, you get two of each design and you get, eight, so eight total. And then we're not going to make the birdhouses um, this week, but you also have um, everything to make eight different birdhouses. Uh, so you get the toppers and they're, they're numbered uh to go with the different bird houses and then you get the bird houses oh and by the way these sheets are double-sided so the front side has some foil on it and the back side is just the image but this is what makes it look really nice when you make your birdhouse card that you can see that the it's not just white on the back but anything that hangs off the birdhouse also uh is has a nice image on the back side so that's really nice about the birdhouse kit. So again, you can make eight birdhouses. And with the birdhouse kit, you also get the envelopes. So you get eight envelopes, so they're ready to go. And again, um, this makes eight designs. You probably have things left over uh, to use on other cards. All right, so that's what comes with the package. Um, and it is still available on the Ecstasy Crafts website. And then let's uh, get started. So maybe what we'll do is let's make the easel card first. It's the most um, intricate of the designs. So um, we'll get that one done while everyone's still fresh and then we'll make the other cards, okay? So this card is um, a five by five inch square card, which would fit in a, a six inch envelope, because you can see I have a little bit of this topper design hanging over the card. So, but that it fits perfectly in the six by, in a six by six envelope. So for this card, I use one of the sheets and I'm just going, so we need to go through the package and we'll get the sheet that I chose. Now, you could choose another um, sheet if you wanted, but um, I had it and then I went through it. So this is the leftover piece. Oh yeah, here we go. So it's this sheet. So for everyone want to see it, and then it has a beautiful uh, daisy pattern at the bottom. And then you've got kind of a wooden pattern with a, it looks like little roses uh, along the border here. So we're gonna use this sheet. And well, first of all, you do need a sheet of white paper. We didn't, I didn't talk about that. And the white paper, so you can make lots of cards from this package using just the designs of the package. However, to get more out of the package, then it's always nice to use some white cardstock. Most people have white cardstock to use. So- Mary Lynn, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, just really quick. Um, somebody said that the directions had the easel card at 5.5 by 5.75. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Uh, and honestly, I don't know what you said, but is that, does that sound right or wrong? Well, the finished design is that because um, this width is 5.5. So we're going to use a 5.5 white square card. And then the top just hangs over a little bit. So that's where I get the finished card is 5.75. Um, just so that you know that it needs to fit in a, in a, a six inch envelope, right? As opposed okay. to a, a five and a half inch envelope. That's the only reason, just because of the little extra. That's yeah, all. okay, so it's, I see what you're saying. Okay, uh, uh, okay, yep, they understand, perfect, thank you. 
Okay. All right. So you've got your paper uh, chosen, and then you we need to cut a, a a background card or a base card from white cardstock, and you're going to cut it at five and a half inches. So if you had an eight and a half by eleven, you're going to cut um, five and a half inches. You're going to have a strip left over. I have a strip here. It's just that I have a big guillotine that I use that I'm not going to cut it today. And then you can just leave it because we're going to uh, score it so that we can fold it in half to make the five and a half by five and a half inch base card. All right. So if everybody wants to do that, then um, we'll have that done. And then while you're cutting, we're going to cut this piece. So we're going to leave this side. We just want this uh, pattern piece and we're going to cut that at five and a quarter. So you're gonna cut from this side and this edge, five and a quarter inches. I'm going to do that. Hopefully everyone has been able to use their paper trimmer and cut their card, their white card. And then we're going to cut five and a quarter inches in from the left edge of this pattern piece of paper. You can keep the other half for uh, another design. So now that we've have those two, now what you're going, oh, I better don't don't put your cutters away. We're, we might as well cut the next um, piece. So if you have this cut at five and a quarter in from the edge, then what we're, we're going to do is we're going to turn this page on the side and we're going to cut it at five and a quarter again. Because this is going to be the frame of the front of our card. All right. So now this is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then we're going to have this little leftover piece. And in our easel card, this is what is going to form the little bottom piece. So if you want to cut this piece, so you can see the way I've done it here is I've left a little bit of a border around it. And I tend to like to leave an eighth in, in one eighth of an inch border. So that means you just subtract a quarter inch from your uh, width of your design. So remember we did this was five and a quarter by five and a, or this was five and a quarter wide. So you can just trim a quarter inch off. So that means make it down to five inches. And then for this design, I just have it, I don't have it the full width because you can see this is the width that we have left over. So just make it, um, I, I don't have my instructions. I think, oh, actually what I did was you can see I cut the, the both sides off a little bit so that we wouldn't have so much of this wooden border. So I'm going to, let me see, I can just measure it here on my trimmer. So the total width of this is one and three quarters. So you can trim, I'm going to trim a little bit off each edge, just like I did before. I'm just eyeballing it and then leave it at about one and three quarters. All right. So see, now I have my uh, stopper. So this is going to be our easel card stopper. All right. So now you should have three pieces of cardstock or yeah, three pieces of cardstock, one white, one five and a quarter by five and a quarter inch square, and then one five and a quarter by one and three quarters that's going to serve as our uh, stopper. So now what we're going to do is we're going to score. And those of you hopefully have a uh, scoreboard if you don't have a scoreboard, then you can use a, a ruler. And if you have a stylus, then that would be helpful. And 
you need something a little bit soft to make a line in the paper. And um, I've, I've heard somebody else suggest using a computer mouse pad would be good. Um, so hopefully people, or remember in your, our last class, you could also use the option of your paper trimmer. The uh, paper trimmers that um, are like a slicer, you can uh, measure and use a little track in the paper trimmer. I didn't grab my paper trimmer to uh, use that uh, today. Um, but when uh, I'll, I'll come back to that and, and show people while you're busy doing a few things. So what we're going to do, so remember our white card is five and a half inches by 11. And so we're gonna score it in half. So we need to score at five and a half. It doesn't matter which edge because we're scoring it right down the middle. Again, I usually like to do it a few times. You can use your scoring tool that comes with uh, most scoreboards, or you can use a stylus, doesn't really matter. To get the nicest fold, fold, it, fold the uh, indented area away from the fold. So that, that is on the outside of the fold. And then you can use a bone folder to make a nice crisp fold, okay? So now we have our five and a half inch square card. And then you can see that this is going to fit right on top of that. But before we add anything, what we need to do is score the front of this card. So choose the front of your card and we're gonna score it at half of the five and a half, which is two and three quarters. I just have to see where I'm scoring. So what I'm going to do is score at two and three quarters here, and then this will serve as my easel fold. It's hard to see though. There you can see the score. So five and a half to fold it in the middle, and then we're gonna score this front section of the card in half. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold that, because if this is the front of the card, we're gonna actually fold this down. Okay. Because that's going to form the easel when we lift it up. Okay. So again, you're going to score two, uh, two and three quarters in from the front edge, and then you're going to fold it down. You can uh, burnish or just make sure crease that fold a little bit more with your bone folder. Okay, so that's the easel portion. So that's not that difficult. Now, um, now we just have to make the stopper and decorate the card, but that's the easel portion of the card. So because this is going to fold. Mary Lynn? Yes. Um, the measurement you just said, somebody said that the instructions said 2.5. It's okay if you did it already 2.5. Um, I, I did mine at 2.75. So it doesn't really matter. It just changes the fold a little bit. Okay. Sometimes it's easiest just to remember half of your easel but it's not wrong to do two and a half. It just will be, yeah, I'm not sure what I, I think it's, it's um, it doesn't really matter. So if you went ahead and did two and a half because that's what the instruction said, not a problem. It just makes this a little different, the fold, which really doesn't matter in the end. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, now what we need to do, because this is going to go on top, is we need to fold our uh, top card so that it matches the fold in the card uh, that we made, because you want it to be able to fold, right? So we do need to score it. So if you follow the instructions I gave you, then you need to do it. Um, so this was five and a quarter. So you need to do it two and a half from the edge, from the one edge. And if you did two and three quarters, uh, you would do it two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. And the other one, sorry, is two and a quarter because this is slightly smaller, right? 
So this is five and a quarter to cut it in or to fold it in half. Yes, it's not, sorry, it's two and um, three eighths. No, two and five eighths, sorry, two and five eighths. I'm doing my math here. Two and five eighths, because that would put it in half. Because I, it's a, a quarter inch smaller, the, so you have a little bit of a, a border around between the uh, design on the top and the white card. So if you um, did this at two and three quarters, then you're going to do this piece at two and five eighths. If you did this piece at two and a half, then you're going to do this piece at two and three eighths. Okay, hopefully that's, everybody got that. Okay. Now we're going to fold this down. Just fold it, score it. And then we're going to add it to the front of the card, lining up the score lines so that it folds easily. This is very thick cardstock. So um, that'll make the, it just fold easier. So it stays nicer. So for this part of it, if you want to use some double-sided tape, then um, if you have glue and want to use glue, that's also an option. And then because it does have to fold, <clears throat> at this line, tape just across it so it doesn't um, buckle up. <clears throat> I'm just going to do it sort of on an angle here. So now you, if you're using the tape, you can remove your <clears throat> protective layers. Now this, I'm going to do the little trick that I'm not pulling it all off. So I have an opportunity to move it if I want, because I do really want to line up the fold areas. Mary Lynn, a little yes. bit of a random question. Um, what, what is your favorite glue to use when making these cards? Um, okay, so my favorite glue is the Creative Expressions acrylic glue. I don't have my bottle here because I tend to pour it in another uh, container, but it's, it's Creative Expressions acrylic dries clear glue. I find it the best adhesive. I have tried other glues and for some reason they just never um, work the same for me. So when I add my gems, when I add anything, I usually use the glue. I've put it in another container here just because I like the tip. Um, but otherwise you can get it in a variety of sizes. You can get it in a large size, which is what I tend to get. And then I can just pour it into this bottle when I, um, when it goes, uh, to a certain level. Otherwise you can even get a little like nail polish type applicator. So for very tiny, th tiny things that you want to use, or you can get a medium sized bottle, which is basically like this. It does have a nice tip on it as well. And it has a little cap. Um, when I get my trimmer, I will also get a bottle of the glue so you can see what it looks like. And then, um, then I can, um, I'm just looking at the comments. Sorry about that. Um, so this tip, this is, it's called, I'm going to see if I have, so these are available in ecstasy crafts as well. Um, you can get two different tops and they actually, you can put them on the glue bottles. I'm pretty sure they work on the glue bottles. They're called fine line applicators. They come in two different size uh, tips. So this one is finer. I, I'm trying to see, perhaps you can see it. It's, yeah, it's so hard to see because it's so fine, but you can see the width of the of the uh, needle portions here. So these are just uh, flat, so they're not sharp. Um, and then these actually, I'll just show you since 
people are asking. You can just take this off. It, I mean, I'm a, I'm a nurse practitioner and these are just like the needles we use at the hospital, but these are blunt ends, so they don't have sharp ends. But basically they just uh, turn on and you can actually get different size tips. These are the two size tips that we have um, available with the bottles, but you can even get larger tips. You can look for them on Amazon. Um, for different types of glue, you might want different tips. And then the cap actually comes with a little needle here that you put back into your tip so that it doesn't clog. Um, I tend not to do this. It's, this is a little fiddly because it's very tiny, but then that keeps it from clogging. Um, so, so there's a two different size tips. I think you can get like a combo package where you get both of the tips and then you can just switch them out when you're using um, different bottles of glue. But often I like to have both available because I don't want to switch out my tips when I'm trying to, when I only need a little bit, like I'm adding an accent to a car. So it is nice to have, you can get them with the bottles and the tips, or you can just get the tips. So anyway, that was a great question. So hopefully um, people might uh, try that. All right, so back to our card. Hopefully people have been able to add the pattern piece of paper onto their white card, matching up the fold lines. So you can see how that's gonna fold nicely. So um, the other thing we need to do now is find a couple other pieces we're going to add to our card. So we're going to add a topper to the card. So from the topper pack. So this is a birdhouse. It's the same birdhouse that was with the design. It's kind of like the same birdhouse. This is the extra piece of paper that we cut off. And uh, so it's a similar birdhouse here. The bird is facing the other way. And then, um, sorry, and I walked away for a moment. Somebody asked a question. Um, they wanted to know, how did you put down the top part? I'm not sure what they're referring to. I apologize. Oh, okay. So I, I used, so putting this top part onto the background card, I just used double-sided tape. Um, and then I just, I uh, lined up the edges and that was where I peeled off only part of my tape. And then I lined it up so that this, these two sides I could see were right exactly where the fold was. And then I peeled off the remainder of the, um, the protective layer of the tape. And then I just adhered it down. But if you wanted to use glue, that's why we kind of got off on the glue tangent then you could do glue. I would just put glue all around and then a little bit in the center. Glue does give you a little bit of flexibility so you can adjust it. And then just again, line up these um, fold lines that you made so that they're lined up and then you will be able to fold the card easily. Okay, so hopefully that works for you. Okay. All right, so now we're going to pick out our topper. So if you go through your package of toppers, then um, pick out the topper. You can pick out the same one I did, or if you see one that you prefer um, to use, or you're using a different piece of pattern paper, then choose one that matches your pattern. I'm just gonna try and find the one. Oh. Oh, here we go. Okay. I think there's actually two the same on this page, but anyway. And you're going to press, press, just press them out. And remember, if you wanted, and we're going to take these two uh, pieces out as well, because we're going to um, actually, uh, if you can leave just the inner piece press out the inner piece. There is another uh, frame here, but we're gonna leave that attached just because um, I didn't, I mean, you could take it out or you could uh, leave it attached. It really doesn't matter. But that was how I had left it here for this card. So we'll just do the same. You can even remove it, I guess, and then add the, the pattern back in. Really doesn't matter. You could save the frame for something else. And then like I talked about in the other class, if you don't like these little um, edges from where you, you pressed it out of the paper, 
you can just trim those off with your scissors. It just makes it a little bit cleaner. Um, but sometimes it, it looks perfect without even doing that. All right, so we're gonna have the frame and we're gonna have the inner piece. And now we're going to add them. We can add them to the card. Um, but I think maybe what we should do, just because if we, this we probably want to do at the end of the card, just because then we're not, it's not getting um, moved up and down and we might uh, sort of catch it or something. So let's make the inside of the card. So the inside of the card, I chose a piece from our paper pad that was the green background because I thought it matched nicely with the um, stopper piece. However, you could choose whatever color you desire. The pink might look nice. That would look nice as well. Um, whatever you want, but I chose the green. So the green is at the front of the paper pad and on the back it has, um, it's on the back of this sheet. So what we want to do is we want to cut that piece. So tear it from your pad and we're going to make this piece of paper four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Whoops, I just don't have enough space in my little area here. All right. So because this is double-sided paper and we have a pattern on the one side, you might wanna cut it because the back is the same, right? Doesn't matter, it's all green. So when we cut five and a quarter by five and a quarter, you might wanna cut from this edge because then you can see what pattern you will have remaining. So on my trimmer here, this is five and a quarter. So I can cut it. And then if I cut it this way, I'm going to have all of these little designs left over. I'm going to cut kind of here on my, the bigger design. So you could decide if you wanted, you could always cut right at the edge of the big design and cut a little bit off the top here. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you're thinking about, I always try and maximize my uh, options for future. So I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do this because I know that's, that's almost six. And then I can, if I need five and a quarter, I can take a little bit off here. And then what I'm going to do is turn it around and cut it at five and a quarter here. So now I actually have two designs that are still really nice. Um, we didn't, you wouldn't really know that we'd cut much off. And now I'm gonna cut this at five and a quarter though. I do have to cut this at five and a quarter. So I'm gonna lose one of my designs. Oh, I'm gonna lose both. Well, that wasn't very smart. Yeah, cause I'm gonna use it. Oh, well. I was thinking where we're using this, but we still at least have, you could still use this piece. So the piece I have, you could still use this and add a little bird or something on top. And then we still have the a strip of little designs that you can use. And we're gonna use one on a tag and one on, um, oh, I used one on the background of the bonus card. So I'll show you that. Okay, so anyway, that just gives you an idea of how you might want to, plan what, how you're cutting the background piece. So now this should fit just on the inside of the card. Okay, so we should go ahead and attach that. And again, I'm just going to use double sided tape, but um, you can use glue. I lost my scissors. This uh, double-sided tape from uh, Be Creative, it's great. You can actually tear it. So, oh, I see my scissors right now. 
So you can actually tear it, which is nice. Um, I just tend to always use scissors. All right, so remember this is the outside of our card. We're gonna put this on the inside. Again, I'm just going to flip back my edges so that I can get it nicely centered without it adhering quickly to my card. I think the cut edges, you're, it's easier to actually remove the protective layer of tape. You have a sharper edge to pick up with your finger now. Anyway, so fix it. Try and center it in your card. Peel back the protective layers. And so now we have the inside made. Or, and this is where you can add your sentiment. Um, and then the next thing that we want to add is the stopper. So in, in this card, we're using this border stopper because you can see that it looks really nice in the finished card. It all just sort of coordinates. You've got the pretty uh, daisy layer there. You've got a pretty pink border here. And then you can see even in this one, yes, and the other frame, you can see how this wooden, there's a little bit of a wooden design here on this frame, which also matches the wooden piece at the back of the bottom on the stopper. Now, for this card, I actually also chose this just for you little sentiment. Um, and I think that came with, I think that was, in the birdhouse. Uh, I don't know if that was because it's it's the matte plastic. It's not from the topper section. I think it came from the birdhouse. I'm looking for that. Yes, it did. It came from the pink birdhouse if you're looking for that little just for you, but you could choose one of the toppers as well. You can, I can see I, I punched it out of here. Um, and that was, cause I kind of liked the just for you and it matched my, my card. I'm just trying to see if I have that other birdhouse thing to find it. No. So you can, um, but you can choose from your toppers a, a design that works as well. But that one did come from this page. All right, so back to our design here. So we've got our easel and we've got the inside done. And now what we're going to do is add this stopper. On this one, you, the just for you could be the stopper, you can see, or you can put it right behind the whole um, band or the whole little border here. So this is raised because I want it to stop and I don't want it to slip out. So what you're going to do, oh, I forgot to tell you that, yes, for those of you who haven't received the kit, you also get all of these uh, foam tabs in your package. So. I would just use a few foam tabs on the back. Since we have some large ones, I'm gonna use some large ones here on the back of this strip. And that will raise it enough to form a stopper and it's not too thick. So when you put it in the mail that it um, is too thick. So I'm just, I'm gonna use three today. And then we're just going to peel the protective cover off. And then we're gonna add it to the card. So again, remember there should be about a quarter in, or sorry, an eighth of an inch border around because we cut it a little bit smaller. So just try and center it in the, in the bottom portion of a card. And then that's our stopper. I didn't get the tape off this. Okay, well, this is another you can see I forgot I got sidetracked and so I didn't get the the protective layer off this portion of my card. 
So I can just use, I have a needle tool. Um, it's like a dental pick. Uh, we used to sell these. They came from Cherry Lynn and they're great for poking um, things out of your dyes. It's nice to have the little uh, angle, but you can use any um, piercing tool or needle tip tool to just try and pick off the layer and then pull it out. So now it's adhered properly. I could see that it was coming away, so. All right, um, so hopefully everybody has a little bit of a stopper. I don't know if you've had a chance to grab one of the, um, I just got my package of things here, uh, to find a stopper, uh, if you wanted to put a little sentiment there. You could also use, I'm just going through the package, you could also use part of a border here if you wanted. This border also has the pink flowers and matches. You could cut a strip of paper from uh, here or a sentiment. I'm just seeing if there's other ones that might lend themselves. You could even use, oh, oh my. You can even use um, one of the little birdies or something. You could do that. You could put a little circular birdie there or one of these other sentiments. And then there's some here too that say like birthday wishes. That would be, we're going to use that one in on our other card. But again, that's the sentiment I chose. You may choose another one, doesn't matter. So you can see in Sunshine and Smile. So there's lots of other uh, little sentiments that you might wanna add to your card or even a little design like the bird. This one says, happy birthday, many thanks. So what, again, whatever occasion you might want, and maybe you just wanna leave it off today so that you can fill in that when um, you know who you're going to send the card to. All right, so now what we can do is we can add the easel portion to the card design. So in order for this, so you can see when somebody receives it, they're gonna receive it in the mail like this. So the front looks nice because you've got the design on the top. And then when you hopefully, I think every most people will realize that you stand it up. So we only want to adhere this topper piece to the the lower half of the card. And because we have the score line here, it's easy to know where that is. So in, the, in my example here, I did use some foam tabs to add uh, the frame. So let's add the frame first, and then we can add the inner piece uh, after. So this frame, if you, um, I'm just going to, I think, yeah, this is the bottom of my frame. So no one's gonna see this. I'm just going to add a little bit of tape because mine's um, just coming apart there. Won't really matter. I could just put my foam tabs over it, but you can also tape it down if you want it. Mine just was coming away from the frame. And now I'm going to use some foam tabs. And I think in the selection, I'm going to choose, we have the medium size squares. So again, check and see where you're going to add it to. And you're just going to add it to the uh, lower piece of the card. This will be plenty of adhesive for this frame. And then the easiest thing to do is to place it. Actually, this is going to be a little bit. If you, no, oh no, it's all right. Because you want to, you don't, oh, I'm gonna move it up here. You want to be able to see the base. So you can put it right to the base because remember it, it, it goes over the edge. So you wanna make sure it fits in your envelope. So I'm just gonna move it a little bit up from the base and then try and uh, center it. And then you have your frame. Okay, so hopefully everybody's managing to do that. And then it's just 
oh, just going over just a shade there. Now, what you're going to do is because we're going to add the frame to this inner piece, the easiest way to do that is to put some foam tabs. Now I put foam tabs in there. I'm trying to, yes, I did two. I did, um, so it doesn't matter, take your largest or your medium size. And I'm just gonna put it sort of in the center and I'm gonna put two there. And then I'm going to take off the protective piece and I'm going to add another one right on top because we already raised this frame. So this will raise this inner piece a little bit more. So you just get a little bit more dimension so it stands out. So if you want to go ahead and do that, so I'm just going to add this on top. And another one on top. All right, peel off the protective layers and then you can line this up. So again, I often, and then you don't have to worry about only putting it on a certain edge and it's going to overlap your design or overlap the back fold piece. Okay, so I've kind of got this lined up. I'm just going to adhere it down. All right, so now when you stand it up, you can see you've got your easel design. So um, in my card example, here, I did add some little decorations. So I don't know if you have any pearls or you have any gems to add to your card, but what I did was I added a couple pearls in the corner of the frame. And then I added it just here so that it would be a little fancier uh, when somebody saw it. So I did three on either side one in each corner. I didn't bother putting any down below, but you could if you liked. And then when you stand it up, I put some on the lower pieces here so that when you see it as a design, it all coordinates. So we've got the two here. No, you can't really see that. Two here, three here, and then two at the base. So um, that didn't come with your package. But those are just some ways you can add a little bling to your designs. Um, so if you wanted to add that after the card class or figure out what you want to add, you could add green, you could add gold, doesn't really matter. Um, but basically we've completed the easel card. Oh, and then I also added a couple on either side. I um, sort of cut out the edges here and then um, added a few little pearls there too. So you can see what you, how you uh, want to decorate your card. But that's the easel card. So um, not, very, not very difficult once you know how to do it. And you can use this for any of your designs. So it's the basic same instructions for this size card. But basically, if you make um, a five by seven card, you can see you could just do a, a, a thinner strip here or do half of five, which is two and a half, and just score it and fold it. And then you just need to make a stopper. So with the hunky dory um, items, we used this as a band uh, today, but you could use any of your sentiments, right? So say we had this sentiment, it's one of the um, toppers, you could just use that, you don't need to have a thick one like we have. But I just thought it used up the same paper that we were using. Um, but you could just make that as your stopper. So lots of things. So if you have die cuts, you have frames, you have something to decorate your die cuts, you can use exactly the same design. All right. So the next card I thought we would make is this card. So this card ends up being a five by seven card. But, but what you can see is that we're going to have something hanging off the top. Again, it's just to try and change up some of your designs because sometimes we uh, think, okay, how can I make this a little different? Um, so even just having your design hang off the edge adds to your card because when it's displayed, you see it, right? It, it just displays nicer. And most people are going to display their cards when they get them. 
So in this design, what you need to do this is um, it finish it the finished design is five by seven, but we're going to cut a card. So we, again, we use some white cardstock. We're going to cut the white cardstock to uh, uh, it's going to measure four and a half. So we're going to leave a half inch. So instead of uh, a five by seven, we're going to make a five by no, sorry, a, a four and a half by seven inch card. That's basically what the white piece is, right? So if you take away this, it's a four and a half by seven. So it's not quite a slim line, it's in between, but we can leave this um, hanging off the edge. All right, so let's choose the pattern paper and then we can do all the cutting at the same time. And on this card, you didn't see it in the picture that goes with the instructions, but what I did do was I decorated the inside. So you're going to have some strips of paper left over when you're when you're cutting up your um, designs. So I thought, OK, well, let's just use some of these um, on the inside, because it's always nice to have a card that's decorated on the inside as well. Now, the easel card, we already did decorate it. So this this was a, an example of how you might want to decorate this card. So just a couple strips. And then I chose one of the sentiments that was in the paper pad and just added it to the, the uh, center of the card. All right, so get your card, your packages out. I have mine just here to the right. And the pattern piece of paper I chose is, Ah, it's on the bottom. There we go. Okay. So it's this piece of paper. I don't know which way to show it. Here we go. So it has a mail, mailbox or mail bag here with a bird in the right hand side. And then it has this lovely pattern with the uh, yellow daisies or brown eyed Susans. Um, and then this gold piece at the base. So we're just going to use a strip from here. We're going to leave this design so you can use that for another uh, card. So if you take this piece and then through your topper pack, if you want to grab the design that we used. Now, I think it's on this. All right, here we go. So it's on one of the blue. So they all are kind of color coded at the top. So it's on one of the blue sheets of toppers. And I use the one here at the base with the little bird nest. Now you could choose to use another topper if you wanted. You could choose to use this one or this one. Um, this is just the one I chose. So I'm going to take this out now for this design because I thought the size worked well, just to take the gold frame and the inner frame. And then what you're going to be left with is this blue frame. You're, there's a little blue edged frame that matches this design. So I'm gonna leave that because I can always use that to frame one of the designs in the paper pad because they don't have the gold uh, bling around them, but you could use that frame and just cut a design to fit inside it and then frame it. So um, it will add some bling to the, the paper pad. So we're left with the gold frame and the inner frame. Okay, so take those out. And now in this example, I did choose all the best um, to add it to the side as a sentiment again, whatever you want. So you may choose to, to take that piece out or you may choose to leave that open, 
this area open and you can add another sentiment once you know who you're going to send the card to and what the occasion might be. Because you could choose birthday wishes, um, anything. On the inside, I chose thinking of you, but again, you could choose whatever might match your sentiment on the outside. On the, if you wanted to choose all the best, I see it right here. So it has a yellow, the yellow at the top, and it's right at the base here, all the best. So if you wanted that, you can grab that one at the same time. All right. And if you wanted to add a sentiment from your paper pack, you could grab that at the same time as well. So it's on the, the um, at the paper pad, the sentiments are the back few uh, sheets of the pad. And you can see, I, I chose the thinking of you here. It matches the blue and yellow um, that we use in the cardstock. Um, so, but again, you can leave it and add it when you know who you're going to send the card to. Okay, so we have everything ready to go. Now we have to do some cutting. And thought I cut my card. So if you want to go ahead, oh, here it is, and cut your card, we're going to cut it. You're going to cut your eight and a half by 11 sheet, which is my eight and a half by 11 sheet here I have underneath. And we're going to cut it so that the width is seven inches. So it's easy. I always like to do that first. So the width here is seven inches. And then we're going to turn it this way. And we're going to make this length instead of 10. However, you cut a, 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 a piece of eight and a half by 11 to a, for a five by seven card, which is really seven by 10 inches. And instead of 10, because remember, we're making it just slightly smaller, we're going to do nine inches. So cut it this lengthwise at seven inches and then you're going to turn your cut piece to the side and cut it at nine inches so we have a piece seven by nine and then we're going to cut the pattern piece of paper because again i like that quarter inch as a little um, border around my cards. Um, I'm, we need, so this is seven inches. So we're gonna make the width six and three quarters, and we're gonna make the length because it was uh, four, it ended up, because it was nine and we're gonna score it in half. So it's, that would be four and a half. So we want it at four and a quarter. So we want six and three quarters, by four and a quarter, and we're gonna cut it from this lower piece of cardstock, the pattern cardstock. But you can see, I, I didn't want so much yellow in my design. So I'm cutting, I'm going to cut this strip off of the yellow. So I'm gonna leave this smaller strip and then I'm gonna cut it. So I'm first gonna do that. And again, it doesn't matter. It it's, doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's whatever you prefer that little uh, yellow border to be. So I'm just eyeballing it here. But now I'm going to measure it. So I only go up uh, to four and a quarter. And then this, the length needs to be six and three quarters. So I'm just going to. All right. 
so now I have the front piece. And again, we, we can use some of these, right? I use this on the inside. So maybe um, while you're cutting, so you can see I have this top piece here that's gonna fit on the front of my card. And then I have this yellow strip. So you can do two yellow strips or you can do a blue and a yellow strip, it doesn't matter. Um, but again, I'm going to just cut a little strip off. Sorry, I hit the camera. From this leftover piece. And I don't know what I made it, but I would make it whatever's the easiest, because I know when you are cutting, it's not easy to cut a narrow strip um, with your paper trimmers. So whatever is the easiest size for you to cut, it doesn't matter if it's a little wider or smaller. This is, I can measure for you, this is a quarter inch. This is a quarter inch. Oh, and I'm just going to then have to trim it to seven inches because I'm going to trim it to seven inches only because I have this lower uh, strip right all the way across. If you wanted a little border, you could leave a little border. I think I had this left over and I thought, I don't want to cut another strip off my card. So I'm just going to add a couple little jewels here so that that just decorates it in a different way. I like to use up all my little scraps. All right, so we've got that piece ready to go. Oh no, I didn't, I have to cut it to seven. And then um, I'm just going to eyeball it here because my little trimmer doesn't go to seven. I'm just going to make a little pencil mark. I'm gonna do it upside down here. And then I'm gonna cut it up the line. So I'm all ready to go. I could have just used scissors to anyway. All right. So we've got our blue piece of card cut. And then we have a little extra strip for the inside if you wanted to cut that. And we've got our frame set out. We've got it uh, pressed out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to score this. Score it at four and a half. So four and a half will be right down the middle. So instead of five, remember, we're just making it slightly smaller. And then we're just going to fold it and just burnish the fold or crease the fold with our bone folder, if you have one. And then we've got our card. This will fit right on top. And then we can add our frame. So I'm going to use double-sided tape again to adhere my front panel to the white card. Um, again, you could use glue if you wanted. And then we're going to add the frame or the topper. So if you want to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do my little. These are great spring designs, the bird nests. I mean, we don't have as many flowers in the spring here as they have in the picture. So they're good for all year round or for at least spring and summer. Great for this time of year, especially with Easter coming. All right. All right. So I have the front of my card here. 
And now maybe if you're going to add the little strip, if you've cut a strip and then I think, yeah, see this? You could just cut a little strip off here if you want it, which is the leftover piece or from this side, whatever you wanted, if you wanted to add the two blue strips. If you cut it off the top of this piece, then yeah, it would almost look like this. It's a little shorter. Or if you wanted to cut a little strip off here, then you could do the, the two. I think I'm just gonna cut one of the, unless you have, whoops, unless you have a leftover strip from one of our previous designs. I may have had a leftover strip that I used when I was making these, but I'm just gonna add another one. And I'm going to make this one about six and three quarters. So I have two strips now. I'm gonna mine's a little wider, the blue one doesn't matter. And I'm just thinking because if when we add this piece and it hangs over the edge, if you if you keep folding it up and down, then sometimes it'll crease, right? So um, it does kind of fold right under because it well, no, it, it could, I mean, I haven't done it. So, but it's always easier if you're going to decorate the inside that you do it before that, so that you don't inadvertently uh, crease that frame. I'm just gonna use a piece of double-sided tape because it fits perfect here. Right. And we're going to just add another little piece. All right. And I just left that little bit because I thought I kind of liked this little idea of just adding a few little gems. Just adds a little something different to your design. Okay. So we can add or you can add the gems later. Um, and you can also add whatever sentiment you want later. But again, I chose one from the paper pad that sort of matched the overall design of a card. Okay, so now all we have to do is add the topper to the front of the card. Now, you could add it in the middle if you wanted. You could add it to the right side. You could add it to the left side. It doesn't matter, whatever your eye prefers. And in this design, I, I did it to one side so I could add this particular sentiment, but I also kind of like things offset. Sometimes I like things central, other times I like them offset. So again, whatever you prefer. So what we're going to do is similar to the last card design, just take the um, inner design out of the frame and then we're going to add the frame and we're just gonna add it flat to the background card. I didn't add it with any foam tabs, but we're gonna add foam tabs um, so that the design that's in the middle will stand up a little bit off the card. So this, I think um, the easiest way to add this is probably with some glue. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue. And remember, we're going to only add it to the portion of the frame that's going to be uh, attached to the card. So you, you want to keep a piece at the top. You don't have to add glue to the top part. OK, so figure out where you want to place your design. And I'm just going to uh, remember we have about a half inch to spare at the top there. I'm just eyeballing it here. And you can kind of line up the little uh, frame piece so that it looks, it looks the same so that you know it's straight. Just little tips to make sure things are straight without um, trying to measure them. And then we're just gonna put some foam tabs 
Again, it's easiest to put them right on this part of the card and then add your frame piece on top. So you're not guessing where to put the foam tabs on your, um, on the topper piece. I seem to have misplaced my little foam tabs. Oh, here they are. So again, you've got a variety of sizes to choose from. Um, I'm just gonna, I don't think you need too many. This is a medium size. This isn't heavy. What you're adding really isn't heavy to your cardstock. It's not going to come off. When you have heavier things, you might want a few more, but if they're just light pieces of paper, doesn't matter. All right. So now all I have to do is add my frame or my inner design so that it lines up with the hole in the frame. And then that's basically that card design done. Now in my example here, again, I added the sentiment. Um, if you have a sentiment chosen, all I did was put a little bit of foam tabs underneath. So it also was raised up off of the card. And then I added some little gold jewels and this time just in each of the corners. And then on the inside, again, a couple gold jewels here if you wanted. Um, if you left a space there, you could add one over here too if you wanted something on this side, maybe on the yellow piece, doesn't matter. Whatever you prefer, you get to be creative and see what, what looks good to your eye. Um, so that's, that's our other card. Um, so not, not that difficult, but just something a little different to let some of the topper piece uh, just stay above the card. So it just looks, it's hard for me to, sh for you to see it here, but you, you have your own to look at, but when you stand it up, it just adds a little more interest. Yeah. So it just hangs above and it adds a little more interest to the design. So that's our second card for today's class. And then we just have one left to go. All right, I'm just checking out the comments or chat to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, people are liking that, you know, just something a little different, change up your designs. And again, do that with whatever else you have in your stash. It doesn't have to just be hunky-dory. Just put some die cuts that hang over the edge or some flowers over the edge or have a border over the edge, whatever, whatever um, you have uh, to work with. All right, so the last card is actually pretty simple for everyone, but I wanted to go through a couple things just um, for you again, to learn a little bit more about how you might use uh, these papers. So for this one, it's actually, I think it's the same design that we just, oh, it's some, something similar. So it's like the birds here in this design that they're just flipped a little bit, I guess, right? Yeah, so this taller bird is on the right instead of on the, uh, or on the left in the card we're gonna make and on the right in this card we just finished. <clears throat> So in this design, and we're gonna pick out our, our paper, but it, it's simply just putting the bird design on top of the card, adding a sentiment. And then with this paper, also on the one side came an angular design. And so because of that, I thought, okay, well, that lends itself to making a little pocket inside your card. So maybe you want the pocket on this side, it doesn't matter, and then it leaves you more room for a sentiment. And then this just, uh, you can put anything in the pocket. So I thought if we had time, I was gonna just show how you could make um, a little gift card insert with a tag design from the papers that we're using. So we'll go through that. But this pocket, you could also just put a little gift card in the pocket if you wanted. And then you could do happy birthday or whatever. Thank you, whatever you're using this card design for. But it's just, again, some, some different ways you can use your paper. So um, what we need to do is get the paper for this card. 
when you have so much in this kit, you have to keep going through things. Um, anyway, all right, I've got my package of stuff here. So we're going to find the pattern paper. Here we are. So it looks like this. So we've got the bird design in the lower left and we've got the um, sort of diagonal design that we're gonna use in um, the right-hand side. So now this card is going to, the finish size is your standard A2 card size. Um, so four and a quarter by five and a half. So basically a half piece of eight and a half by 11. So this is my eight and a half by 11 card stock. I'm going to cut it uh, the long side. I'm going to cut it at five and a half. <clears throat> or the 11 inch side, I'm gonna cut in half at five and a half. So I've got two pieces of cardstock, exactly the same size. And I'm just going to score one of them in half. I'm gonna, let's, let's get the card done and then we'll go through how to cut the uh, patterned uh, paper. So I'm just going to score this again at four and a quarter. I have on my scoreboard because it's a popular um, measurement. I have it marked also so that I can leave my little tool that's often there. And I can see it underneath the tool. So sometimes I just mark something, just makes it easier and faster when you're working. All right, so we scored it at um, four and a quarter and now we're just gonna fold it in half. We're going to burnish it. Oh, here's my. And so we've got our four and a quarter by five and a half uh, A2 size card. All right. So now what we want to do is all I did was I just used the, the design at the bottom of this pattern piece. And again, because I like that one eight inch pa um, pattern around my card, I'm going to cut the width of this to, this is four and a quarter to four inches. So if you want to go ahead and do that, so I'm going to cut this at four inches. I'm going to cut the whole width because then you can always use some of the leftover piece for the tag if you wanted to make the tag. Um, and then because this is five and a half, I'm going to cut this at five and a quarter. So now I have the piece for the front of my card. Now, so put that aside and then, um, so put your, your card and your one piece aside. And now what we're going to do is just cut this angle piece. This is pretty simple to cut, um, even if you had a paper trimmer. What I like to do is just line it up. And because there's a pattern here, I'm gonna move my cutter over a little bit here. Because there's a pattern, I can see, I can line it up. Now I know my card is, you can see it's only so wide. It's, it's four and a quarter inches wide. And if you want a little um, frame, it's gonna be about four. But what I chose to do was just cut this end straight because I, I kind of wanted the, all of the daisy pattern to be part of my pocket on the inside of the card. I can always trim this down to whatever measurement I want, but I kind of just wanted to uh, make it straight on the diagonal edge. So that's how I did that. So you can line it up in your trimmer along the edge where you know it's going to cut or in your paper trimmer uh, where you're going to cut. 
And the easiest way to do that is just sort of eyeballing it. All right, so we've got this piece of card left over, which we can use for a gift, the a tag or gift card um, in a few minutes. Okay, so put, just put that aside for now. And now we have our diagonal piece for the inside of the card. And I'm gonna see how well I did here. Yeah, so you can uh, just trim a little bit off. So for this one, I can just trim the edge to uh, four. Because remember, we're gonna have a little edge around it. And so we're gonna just make this edge at four and we're just gonna trim the little tip off. Do the same thing if you're using a paper cutter. And then I just have a little, it's a little flat edge here, but otherwise I have a nice little pocket. Now, if you wanted and you wanted the pocket on this side, you could, you could, even if you trim this little piece off, doesn't matter. You could just trim this bottom piece off, doesn't matter. So, where, however, you want the pocket to fit um, on whatever side of the card. I happen to do it here. So, all right. So we've got these, these two pieces and that's basically almost the card already done. So what you're going to do is we're just gonna add the front of a card, the, the, the bird pattern piece to the front of the card with double-sided tape or glue, whatever you're using today. And then we're going to add the pocket. And all I did was I just use a piece of double-sided tape along these two edges. I didn't do anything fancy, just some double-sided tape. And it, it gives enough opening in this pocket to slip something inside. It doesn't go right to the base, um, but it will slip inside. And that's the easiest way to form a pocket. If you were going to put more items in your pocket, so say, I don't know. So you had a few gift cards you wanted to give some, somebody. Then I might use some a little a foam strip um, on both edges, and then it would just raise the whole pocket up and allow you more space to put something more inside the pocket. But for this, I just thought a gift card was, and then we could just add some double-sided tape. And you can see, so in this, what I have here is a piece of our leftover cardstock, and I have a little, um, flap here that you can put a little gift card in and then all of this so the gift card the little flap the card stock for the tag all fits in here and the tag fits perfectly I think I did measurement because you can always trim it if it's not going to fit the ribbon just kind of sticks out um, but you can tuck that underneath but so it all fits so it even it does ac accommodate uh, a few pieces of paper, this little pocket. All right, so let's add our front card to the white card. And then we're gonna add the pocket on the inside and then looks like we should have some time and we can make the little uh, gift tag and pocket and yeah, gift tag and gift card holder. And so, because my pocket, I'm just going to add the tape. So again, only on two sides to form the pocket. So this is my, this is the side I'm going to use as my base. So I'm just going to do here and leave the diagonal open because that should be the same on whatever side you're choosing to put the pocket. And you want to go fairly close to the edge um, so they have enough an, as much space as possible. Now you could choose to use glue as well. Again, just try and keep your glue to the edge so it doesn't um, 
sort of make your pocket a little less flexible or allow as much. Okay, so just putting that on the side. So just made sure I got sort of got that even. And then we're going to put the front. Now on my card design here, I did add a little sentiment. It's from the topper pack, you're so tweet. So you can add again, one of the sentiments from the topper pack. Um, you can choose one now, you can leave it and uh, choose the sentiment when you are going to send a card. It's kind of nice if you have all these cards ready to go. Um, then you can just add the sentiment. Maybe you want, maybe you have a stamp and you want to say Happy Easter. Maybe, um, maybe it's Happy Birthday. Maybe it's thinking of you. Who knows? Whatever, whatever you need it for. <clears throat> Happy Spring. All right. So now in the final card design, I did add a few little gold embellishments in the corners. You could add some scattered. You could add some glitter to the eggs if you wanted little glitter to the birds, um, whatever you prefer, right? Because this, you can, you can um, just decorate it however you want. Sometimes a little bit of bling like the jewels or some glitter uh, would be great. Uh, I see a question here. Ronnie's asking, um, can you, Please tell me what the base cardstock is that you are using or a good overall cardstock that doesn't crack when you score it. Yeah. Um, so one of the keys, since we're close to the end, for cardstock not cracking is when you score it, that you score it. I'm going to see if I have my, let me just find a, well, I'm going to score. This is a, a leftover piece, four and a quarter by five and a half, like we cut the one piece of cardstock in two. If I score this here at four and a quarter, part of the key is to score this away from you. If you score it towards you, you're more likely to get cracking. So that's one tip. Um, so when I score it away from me, I find the cardstock that I'm using uh, works really well. This, uh, I use, a very thick cardstock. This is 120 pound cardstock, um, which tends to actually crack easier than thinner cardstock. But if you score it away from you, I really have no, or not score it away from you. If you, when you fold it at the score line, you fold it away from you, then that seems to work. Um, this cardstock is, I mean, there, Ecstasy Crafts has a variety of cardstock. They, um, good cardstock that doesn't seem to crack is the Creative Expressions Foundations cardstock. That's a nice weight. It's not really as heavy as, the, as this one that I use, but you don't always need to use this heavy cardstock. Um, this one I actually get, I get on Amazon. It's, <laughs> it's uh, the accent opaque 120 pound cardstock. But the foundations card is a good one because if you use if you want colored cardstock, it comes in beautiful colors and it also comes in um, sort of a pearlized look or metallic look, which is great as well. And those are very nice cardstocks. Um, but I think it's how you score it. That's the easiest. The other uh, tip. I don't have my little piece of sandpaper, but if you get a piece of very fine sandpaper, maybe uh, your husband or a friend or whoever might have some sandpaper for you, <laughs> that very fine sandpaper. And then if it has cracked, I just rub it with the piece of sandpaper to smooth it out and you'll never know it cracked. So that's a little tip. I always have a piece of um, sandpaper in my, sort of toolkit uh, ready to go if I need it and if I had a little bit of cracking. Okay, so I hopefully that helps. And um, so hopefully during that 
little aside. Everybody has got their card ready to go. And um, if you wanted to go ahead and make a little tag, then I'll just go through how I did this particular tag today. So I did use the same card stock that we had left over. So the piece, this is my piece that I had left over. And I know it doesn't look like I have yellow on the bottom. So I'm not, I actually think I used, I must have used something here. Um, for this tag top, so I don't know if you have a die set that cuts tags. Um, there, there, we do have on ecstasycrafts.com, there's several nested tag sets. And the, um, so you've got lots of options. This, I actually used one of the hunky dory punches. And this one has basically what you do is you put a strip of paper onto the, into the inside and you can, there's little notches at the bottom here. So in between this area is 1.5. These two notches, it's two, and this is 2.5. So the widest you can make is 2.5, which is what I made here. <clears throat> you slide your your cardstock in it and then it sizes a different topper so this one because i've cut the biggest it has the scalloped edge but you can see if you didn't have as big it's only only going to cut this portion so it does have a scalloped edge or it looks like a scalloped edge but it'll be straight from here and then if you had the smaller tag, it would just have the one little scallop at the top. <clears throat> this punch also punches your hole in it. So you're good to go as soon as um, you punch, as soon as you put it in, it punches down. So let me see if I have, well, maybe I'll cut this up. So I have a smaller piece here. So maybe I'll do just show you. Um, what do we have? We have one and a half. I'm just gonna uh, that's don't do two. so you can see it but again if you wanted to make a tag so this is the two i'm just going to you do have to go right in you have to make sure you go right in and then you punch it down and so that's my two inch pretty simple this is my two and a half and again it kind of catches but you just have to make sure you go all the way press it down and then i have my two and a half and did I have a one and a half I thought I did oh here we go tucked in there here and then the smaller piece again just try and go right down and there you go so very quickly I have all the different sizes of tags so those are great but also the nested die sets are great as well. So to make the tag today, what I did was I cut another little strip. I'm gonna cut it from my cardstock. So I cut my tag. I cut a little strip and I put it, now I lost my two and a half inch. Oh, here we go, it's on my, I cut it off. So cut it to the size you want it to be. And then all I did was taped this again, just along the edge, cause that will serve as a stopper at the base of the tag. I'm just gonna cut my tag so I off so it's gonna fit inside my card. And now I'm just going to add a little piece of tape just along the base. Right off. And this is, whoops, 
this is like the stopper for in our um, pocket that we made. So I have a little piece here. Now this, I lost my gift. Oh, here we go, my gift card. So this, you could just put your um, gift card in and it, it would fit there nicely. It's just tape again. Um, but I just decorated it a little bit. So I took one of the leftover pieces that we cut off. Remember when we were cutting our green background, we had these little squares at the bottom. So I just cut one and I just put it on top. I did back it because this is thinner paper. So I did back it with a little piece of scrap cardstock. So it would be a little bit firmer and then just added it on top of this little uh, stopper or the gift card holder really. So <clears throat> this front piece is just decorative, but that's basically the, uh, so you've got a little gift card holder that you could use, decorate it with one of the little uh, designs that you have left over from your paper pack. And then you can place it inside the pocket of the card. So that is, that's kind of all of the cards that we made today. Um, oh, since we do have a little bit of time and people are still um, wanting to learn some more, again, this is the bonus card that is on the blog. So we have, uh, this is pretty simple, but again, it goes along, it's a similar design as we made with the uh, toppers hanging off the card. This is called a rocker card, or that's what people call it. It's a circle, but you can see how it rocks. Um, but otherwise it stands up and is nice for display. So this is pretty simple. All I did was I chose the green with the yellow pattern cardstock, and I cut a six inch circle which I have a six inch circle. This is the Sue Wilson nested circle die. So there's lots of circle sizes, but if you have a six inch circle, um, but you, I mean, you can't make a rocker card with a square, but you could do the same thing with a square card, just make a six inch square. And then all I did was I scored it down the middle. And then I added one of the circular toppers on top because <clears throat> it matched. You can see it has sort of the, the brown eyed Susans there, there's brown eyed Susans along the border here. I added the frame like we did in the car designs uh, today. I added the circular um, outside frame just with, with glue or double sided tape. And then I made this one raised on the inside. I just added a few little gems on each uh, side. And then I added a little bow and that, so it's a pretty simple design. I did add, I thought, okay, we've got some little pattern uh, squares here. I could have cut this as a circle. It might've matched a little nicer, but I just added a square design to the back so that we decorated the back and we, because we had these um, to use. So that's kind of the little bonus card and how I did that. So again, a pretty simple design. The only thing is when you cut it, make sure when you have a border like this at the bottom that that's gonna be straight or when you score it. I don't, I don't think it really matters so much when you cut it because it's a circle, but when you score it, you just have to try and make the border straight. So, so that's the bonus card. You can go to the blog and um, the instructions will be there, but it is pretty, pretty um, simple. Six inch circle, score and a half add a topper and you're done. Now this, I think you need a six inch square envelope for this because it actually becomes fairly wide. You could slim it down. I could have moved this down a little bit and then it might fit into a A2 size envelope. So just when you're designing, also try and think about what envelope you're going to use uh, to put it in. All right, so the next car class, um, is in two weeks, 
April 14th, which is just before Easter. Um, this We're going to try and make two card designs. This card design, we're using the, I'm going to, this is the dogwood panel die. Um, so you get two panels, you get five dice total, and it's lovely because you can make lots of things with this. So I'm going to show you some other designs as well, but we're going to try and make these two cards. So this one, where we use the whole panel, and then we made this a little bit three-dimensional. And our background, we're going to create as well, which is with our pixie powders. So we're going to play around with pixie powders. And then the little butterfly comes with the die set as well. And then I just added happy birthday, but of course you can add whatever sentiment. And then this is using the same die set. This, um, I use the other panel that comes with the die. And then we're going to create the, the flowers uh, from the pixie powders as well. And we're just going to cut that out. So those are designs for uh, two weeks, our class in two weeks. And then um, hopefully I can share with you designs for the following class. So I hope everybody enjoyed the class. I think we got to all the questions. Um, we got the link for the tag. Somebody wanted the tag punch link. Um, okay, great. People thought they learned a lot, so that's great. That's always the uh, purpose of the class. And so I hope to see you again in a couple of weeks or at upcoming classes. So stay well, everybody, for the next few weeks, and uh, we'll see you again soon.